Hello! In this Vago tutorial, we will show the three most common ways to establish communication with a Vago smart printer and explain the possible settings in the print preview. The smart printer can be connected either via the supplied USB cable or via the Ethernet interface. When communicating via the Ethernet interface, there are two ways of assigning an IP address. Either via DHCP, in which case the IP address is assigned automatically by the router, or manually by giving the printer a fixed IP address. First, we show the connection via USB cable. To do this, we connect the printer and the PC with the USB cable supplied. A Windows message appears that a new USB device has been created and is ready for use. We open the printer software Vago Smart Script and create a new project with a green plus. For the communication settings, it does not matter which template we select and confirm with Create Project. The Print Preview window can now be opened either via Menu and Print or via the shortcut Ctrl P. The printer search will start and if the printer is connected via USB and turned on, it will be displayed as Smart Printer. We will see that it is ready and is now able to print. If the printer was not ready when the print dialog was started, we can start the search again by clicking on the Search for Printers button. If more than one printer is connected, it is advisable to assign unique alias names in the Printer Manager. One way to integrate the printer into an existing Ethernet network is to have it automatically assigned an IP address, for example by a router using DHCP. DHCP is enabled when the printer is shipped. When the printer and the PC are connected to the network, we search for the printer using the Search for Printer button. The printer is now displayed. If the printer is not found, you can manually add a printer in the Printer Manager using the Printer Plus icon. To do this, we first enter the IP address of the printer assigned by the router. This is shown in the printer display. Use the magnifying glass to find the printer. It's now ready. To keep track of multiple printers, we can give the printer a unique name, which will now be displayed in the Printer Manager. We can also give it an alias name, which will also appear on the network. Another way to integrate the printer into an Ethernet network is to assign a fixed IP address to the printer. The IP address is assigned directly on the printer. To access the menu, press the right arrow button for 3 seconds. Use the arrow keys to navigate to the Devices icon and press Enter. In the LAN settings submenu, leave the port number at 9100 and deactivate the DHCP function. We can then enter the address of a default gateway. In our case, the printer is connected directly to the PC and we do not need a default gateway, so we leave it at the default address. Next, assign a static IP address and a subnet mask for the printer on the network. Press Enter to save and exit the menu. The configuration is now complete. Back in SmartScript, we open the Printer Manager window in the Print Preview with Manage Printers and add our manually configured network printer with the Printer Plus icon. Under Printer Properties, we give it a name that will be displayed in our printer software SmartScript and an alias name that will be visible on the network. We enter the previously assigned IP address, confirm with Apply and after confirming that the alias name will be visible to all users of the printer, we connect to the printer. If you receive an error message saying that the printer settings cannot be changed, the alias name may be too long, up to 15 characters. Occasionally, the printer may need to be restarted. The printer will now be listed in the Printer Manager and the firmware version of the printer will also be displayed. We can use the Update Firmware button to directly install a new version and then close the Printer Manager window. We select our printer from the printer drop-down list and it is shown as ready to print. 
In addition to communication, this window also allows you to change the individual parameters of the print setup. You will usually get good results with the automatic values, as these are already set for the material selected in the project settings. Calibrate. The calibration function is only required when using material with gaps. Clicking on the button will display an image showing the position of the sensor in the printer. This depends on the material we have selected in the project settings. Here we have the indication that we have currently selected a gapless material. No calibration is necessary or possible and the sensor should be in the middle. If we now change the material to, for example, cable tie marker to 11835 and click on calibrate, we will see the sensor position moved sideways. If we did not move the sensor and left it in the center, we would get a misprint, because the printer is orientated to the center hole spacing. Reset. The reset button can be used to restart the printer. There is also an option for a complete hardware reset. Please contact our support for this. Print Darkness. This is where you can adjust the print temperature. For example, if the result is too light, you can increase the value and the print will be darker. However, the temperature is too high, the ribbon will stick and tear. Print speed. The print speed can be adjusted here. As the quality of the result depends on the correct interaction between print speed and print temperature, we recommend leaving the value at 2 and adjusting the print temperature if necessary. Correction factor. Especially with long tape material, the tape may be too short or too long, so it does not end with the last terminal block and must be corrected here. After cut traveling position. This value depends on the material used and is set for use with additional cutter. Normally, this value is maintained when cutting the tape with scissors, as the end of the printed tape is fed out of the printer. Theoretically, this value can be set to zero, which will make the printer more accurate, as the printer will not feed the strip out at the end of the print and pull it back in for the next print. Vertical offset. Adjustments can be made here if the text moves up or down. A shift may be noticed, particularly in the case of equipment labeling, and can be readjusted here. Clicking on the question mark opens a note with a link to a help page that explains the topic in more detail. Horizontal offset. The same can be done in the horizontal axis, but we are not aware of any application that has required readjustment. Reset settings. Resets the values to the default values, so the values recommended by SmartScript for the selected project material. Print count. This sets how often the projected strip is printed.